minute mark is play towards Audi in that top lane and yep. then start to rotate towards Scout and Hope and start to pick up Dragons. But BLG have successfully held back EDG in the early games in both cases. It's the team fighting where those parts started to fall apart for BLG. Now we've got to check if with this composition that they've gone for, the strong frontliner in Trundle and Maokai, does it give enough of a an easy setup in these fights for BLG to execute? It's game three. It's BLG and EDG. We've got a fresh tune here for some reason that I've never heard. But that's cool because we've got the final game coming through. EDG are on the outskirts of the top eight bracket. They're sixth right now. A loss here would put them down outside of that at six and five. But for BLG, they need to win every single series to hit that magic number nine. EDG could be the team that knocks out BLG in the long run. All down to this game. Colonel says it's topsy-turvy. He says this game is gonna be back and forth. And that's what we want to hear. Coming down to how well these teams can execute on their compositions and definitely execute in this early game. Look at where Gragas is going. Junja, again, starting down towards this bottom side. Could either opt towards a full clear in the bottom side to then back and go towards a gank top. But more than likely, is actually looking to start red into a top side clear of blue and gromp and then back to opt in towards a bottom side gank when he has Predator up and available. Start with an invade. The top lane is coming down as well. Actually, look, AD in the mid lane right now while BLG are committing to this. It resets, but Meteor's sticking around. Look at where Scout is, trying to move <laughs> across here, but Fofo's able to play keep away with the EDG mid laner. Nobody winning out right now, this keeps resetting. It keeps resetting, but remember that Meteor has to take the long way around. He's going back to his side of the jungle while Junja starts on Krugs. While Fofo was kind of forced off the lane a little bit, Scout <laughs> just hits him. This is the power of Aurelia. If you just walk up to someone in auto, you can die, but at least Fofo gets a good trade back. And that's the power of Fofo at this early stage. Is Enough damage in the paddle star and the passive proccing to get a, a bit of a turnaround damage there. Now Shinmo trying to press up as they're about to hit level two. So EDG will back away in the bottom. Oh lane. yeah, show me top. This is the lane I care. This looks like the, the most fun lane in the game. Oh yeah, there's as much action as I thought there would be. A big wave building up towards the Valkyrie, but don't worry, he'll get there. As we got Conqueror this time around for Meaty. He, he ran Predator in game number two, but now we're changing things up. Yeah, especially when you've got the likes of an Orn in the front line. Meteor's definitely going to be chomping his way through this tanky top laner. In oh, Audi. yeah. So. We're back. <laughs> You're so excited. Sorry, you know, you don't get time for Meteor. This is super important, this lane. This is make or break the game, this one. Okay, while we're watching the, a bit of a wet noodle fight in the top lane, let's just run down how BLG want to actually try and execute this. Because we already talked about ADD and Meteor beefing up their front line and allowing for Fofo to look for Poke, Jinjiao as well. On, or Jinjiao on this, uh, Felios can do a lot of work if given the opportunity to. So this is definitely a team that wants to wait until those three items come through for Fofo oh. to really look to burst someone out and Jinjiao as well to have the three items, the Essence Reaver, the Infinity Edge and the Zeal to wait. But this is super important what's happening on our screen because Meteor goes in for the invade. Junja's level two. Meteor takes the red buff. And now for Junja, a level behind, a camp or two behind. He has to start vertical jungling here. Might not be the worst thing in the world, but Meteor has a tempo advantage in this early jungle. He does in the fact that he's got into to the opposite side, but the problem is that he hasn't got any camps on this side of the jungle. So Meteor is now in no man's land where he can't really opt into going towards the top side right now because he thinks Aurelia has gone to support Junja in stealing away these camps. So yes, Meteor has forced Gragas back, but Gragas actually wins out in the long run here because he's able to pick up so much. Well, we're looking at trades on the bottom side because the hook lands onto Hope, but Hope has himself rents available into Shinmo. It's like a more exciting start to the game, especially within the lanes itself. Meteor and Fofo. They'll be able to move down. Aurelia was not in a position to push that wave after the back. And look at Hope and Mako. They realize something's going astray here. Flash and Cleanse available. Mako's the one they're targeting here who has the heal. Good dazzle here. Hope can just kite his way back. Fofo doesn't land the trouble bubble. And Hope and Mako still willing to fight this one. Scout has started to roam down, but with Junja opting towards the top side, Scout's going to just return to the lane. Now Hope and Mako still need to be careful. Fofo fakes backing away. They know he's still here. Paddle Star doesn't oh, connect. Jinja. 
they're waiting, wasting a lot of time. And the majority of farm was picked up by Hope and Mako. Now trying to bait them, but this bush is watered. EDG's bottom lane are winning this out. Because BLG had their AD carry tank several turret shots. Now, great. Scout has managed to push in mid lane. Junji is still stealing away all these camps. And they're looking to answer for the play on the top side by diving this low mana Melka. Because Junja owns this side of the map due to the early jungle we saw. And now ADD has no mana. Finally, more than a wet noodle. Audi can take this one up. He hits first, takes the first turret shot. The flash out asks for the twist and advance, but you get a nice force duet. The body slam comes through as well. First blood goes to Audi, but it's still first blood for EDG. This was so well played by EDG. Now they've got themselves. What a like our kill in the top lane. Would have liked that to go over towards Scout. We weren't quite able to get that. Still, turret plate will fall. Although, as I say, that TP that, will come in that, to stop that it. That is hardly a trade-off for BLG. 160 gold versus first blood on this horn in the top lane, who's winning this lane as well, ladies and gentlemen. The Maokai resets uses his TP. Audi, level six now, though, with his TP in the back pocket. You mentioned the advantage. It's big in 10.6 when TP has such a big cooldown now. Yeah, did it get extended? I think it's up to seven minutes now. So this is a yep. really long cooldown for that summoner spell. And we already talked about EDG. Look, they're already starting to set up a freeze in this bottom lane. If Audi can get down here, especially with the dragon started by Meteor, they could turn this play and entirely around onto BLG. Scout has both summoners and his ultimate available. Junja walks on in. Meteor has to back away. He's too damn low after being spotted out. And Fofo can't contribute anything here. As EDG's bottom lane want to take him down. Shitmo now in a horrible position. Hope gets the rend. Bursts him down, and first dragon goes to EDG. This is a big brain moment for EDG returning to form. And now BLG are in an awkward position, because Shinmo needs to back, and so does Meteor. But the problem is, Jinjiao has only just returned to wave, has to push out this bottom side of the map, and EDG can look to get the back off and have an advantage in moving up towards the Rift Herald that's spawning in just over a minute. You can see as well, they've got control on the bottom side, so they know it's safe to push this up and make that return. A scout as well has himself pressure through the mid lane. Even with the double longsword versus double amplifying tome, scout is showing threat. And Media is trying to shadow that, now heading towards top side himself. Cool. Back, yeah, back coming in for both of EDG's bottom laners. They're actually, so Hope has decided to stay. They realize that with Shinmo showing, Hope needs to stay to help clear out the wave, and they can just have the man advantage if Mako roams up. But they think the EDG are strong enough with just a three man of scout and Audi. <laughs> no! Look at the war. That's not in the brush. Chunja, what with that? Come on. That's not a pixel brush. What? Camera didn't want to focus on it. I'm surprised because normally the Chinese observers, we see them go right in on that. They, they can be harsh, but. They can. Then it doesn't. Ah, oh, there you go. He's going to be spotted. Oh, the kid. Tried to slip his way into lane. Uh, but we talked about the Herald a little bit before. Look at it, sitting there waiting. Scuttlecrab was secured, but a ward in the back of that pit by BLG. And in this early game, after all these small, minute moves, only 200 gold here for EDG in the lead with that first blood towards top lane. Bottom lane pushing in. They have no desire to be anywhere near top right now. The 2v2 is spicing up. As Mako finds a dazzle, but out with the Dark Passage easily. The reason I wanted EDG to go and make this play off of the backs of Open Mako was that with EDG's bottom lane being forced off the tower earlier, Jin Zhao and Shinmo have the level advantage. You can see, actually, well, Jin Zhao had hit the level six earlier. So if BLG had shoved in that wave a little bit quicker and then rotated towards top, they could have been the ones to start this up. But now, Meteor's going to spot out Junjia on his own starting this. And Scout isn't really in a position to roam over just yet. We're going to get rid of that ward as the death sentence now lands here on Tomanka. But we're going to fight in two fronts as Scout gets the flawless duet. The pillar in the perfect position. Scout has to turn back around. He does with the Vanguard's edge. The double flash body block. And Ooh. wow, the CC chain from EDG. It just makes sense, doesn't it? Put the turnaround from Folk with the range as the Fed Orn comes in, but he's too late. EG, it looks so good, but the damage follow-up wasn't there. And now BLG strike through. Scout trying to come back in with the false duet in the bottom lane. Now joining here, Audi took a long time to die, but EG can't do anything about it as the flush away. Needed there by Mako. Piggy in the middle has been played with Audi at the end of that, but Scout misplayed the entirety of that beginning of the fight. Because of where his lane was situated, he tried to cut through river 
to get over towards the fight as fast as possible. But that meant Fofo and Meteor could collapse on him. He's forced to burn his stun and get away early. So Scout's out of the picture, which means Audi and Junji are in a 3v2, and BLG are able to find the kills. Good news story ends there, because BLG with a lead now after this play. And look, Junji is slow to get down here because they think, okay, we're trying to go towards ADD, but Scout is so much squishier that ADD can tank up the damage a lot longer than Aurelia. So if ADG are forced to deal with the problem of Scout being caught out, and BLG can p find the victory, and now a kill going over to Folk. And a kill going over to Jinjiao as well. BF saw picked up here on the Aphelios. Now for BLG, gold lead in their favor, 1K to the amount as well. And Rift Herald still sitting there to be taken. So a um, really good recovery from what was going on in the first five minutes. Junja looking to steal away that Rift Herald now though. Started Dragon for BLG. Well, at least uh, control of the Dragon being started for BLG right now means that EDG can look to steal it away. They now realize that it's happening though. I don't think BLG are gonna be able to do too much with Audi's TP up and available and Jing Zhao being down on the bottom side. Media gonna take what he can from the bottom side. Jungle, Audi gets the, or ADD rather, gets a shove in the top lane while Scout is gonna return the favor. Bottom side dive onto the Orn being set up though, Dagda. Get ready. This is not the play that I think BLG really want to go for. All they're forcing Audi back, so then Jing Zhao can look to take this turret instead. This sets up really nicely for that dragon, as we said, that's just about to spawn. I think though for BLG, at least the first tower is going to be secured here, because Rift Herald isn't going to match this. Already at one plate left standing. Uh, props to Audi for playing safe and returning to the start of the lane, just in case he's going to get dove, because he was. But Jin Zhao and Meteor share the spoils here. Rift Herald still hasn't been placed by Junja. Scout's still working away at the turret. Nobody is backed here from BLG, though. They're going to start to look towards this dragon. So there is a potential here for EDG to forego the dragon, look towards a tier two with this rift instead. Will be popped down. And I want to see what Scout decides to do here. Junja's not really sticking around though, so it looks like it'll just be a tier one that they're happy. It's happening, but backing away is the jungle and AD carry after picking up the dragon. This second one goes to BLG. We get a mountain rift with a Maokai and an Orn. Oh, you beauty. As now, second charge incoming as you mentioned. Junja still shadowing. Ball Stuart comes in, actually. They want to make the dive happen, but ADD's still pretty tanky. The Rift Herald's going to go down. The Ultman comes through as well. ADD's out. Junja's dead. No. Golden in the nick of time, but ADD survives the dive. And EG have to get the hell out of there anyway. And with BLG having just bent all that gold, now they can look to make a play towards the mid. They know a scout has got to back alongside Junja, so they can get these waves in shape. Junjiao's coming. Oh? 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 They cancelled the back. Junjiao. This is a no-no. He's behind the wave. Flash not available for Junja, but they're going in anyway. The Dazzle connects. The ultimate comes out as well. Survives with the help of Dark Passage. Shinmo, a legend in his own right. As the ultimate comes through, that gets Gravitum on too. Gravitum follow up here as well. Meteor's coming in. EDG a pretty screwed, I would say, with a question mark as ADD joins the fight now. Trouble Bubble connects onto Mako and Shinmo with an easy connection. There's no ultimate available, but hope to save his support. Ignite's ticking away. Is he alive? Yes, he is. But EDG now have nothing. BLG have priority everywhere. Fantastic Lantern coming in from Shinmo to save Jin Zhao in that situation. And BLG were just able to collapse faster. Audi's going to use this to clear the wave, but it doesn't matter. They're still going to be able to get through this terror on the top side. And BLG, fan just great, great play to turn that back around. Much, much better. Hope, meanwhile, all he can do is hit mid. Tower plating is going to go down, but BLG got the full worth out of that top side. Bar two. And they're still committing to take this turret down. And if you're EDG, losing top turret is so bad, right? It means you can't defend that mid lane turret as easily. And especially when you've got the likes of ADD who works wonders on a flank. Meteor as well can come in from the side. BLG can look to make plays around the mid. What a surprise that our top laners didn't get any turret plating. What a shame that is. But a anti-shame, I guess, for Jinjo. I got 600. That was off the big bottom lane push you saw before. The first turret blood that was secured by BLG. Now they're trying to get some more on the side of EDG, though, as Blade of the Ruin King gets a slowdown onto ADD. They've done this one before, but this time the explosive cast will connect. Send out the kittens. 
EDG get a kill there. That's in front of a dragon that hasn't spawned. That's in front of a mid laner that now BLG are pushing. And look at where Meteor is, trying to see if he can get that flank we just talked about. Rest of EDG trying to collapse, though, to save this turret. Okay, Athelios says it's pretty fast, though. Hope can't do too much. Okay, okay, says BLG. They're doing pretty okay. They've gotten all the outer turrets. And EDG on the back foot. This has been a much more calculated game, I'd say, from both teams. I think we are seeing the pinnacle... And we are seeing the best of both here in this final game of the series. So I got what I wanted, but now I want to see what happens because we've got a Mountain Soul, we've got a Mountain Dragon spawning in 145. Baron's a bit far away, but another Herald should be here in a couple of minutes too. EDG now are going to have a bit of a problem trying to get in towards the likes of this Dragon and towards this Baron as well. Fofo, with visions and all, can get a lot of picks. Meteor can start to look for these pillars that can separate out EDG and make it really hard for them to enter into the river to get vision. So BLG now, Whew. with the lead, a slight gold lead, will have to try and look to extend this towards these next few objectives. Just compare 80 carries. There is 1,300 gold between Hope and Jin Zhao. Jin Zhao has the most gold in the game. Scout the only one who's coming close towards him. Even then, it's 500 in his favor. BLG are separated though, and that really strong AD carry is just being forced back by Scout. Scout can potentially get in here and get the flank onto BLG if EDG can find that opportunity to pull the trigger. Fofo will land the trouble bubble. ADD has the ultimate, but not going to pull it here. They defend Hope. Kitten out once again for the slowdown. 30 seconds till Dragon. Fofo starting to become a bit of a menace. That one item Zoe zoning away the whole of EDG. Junja is successfully reunited with the rest of BLG as well. Junja is on a bit of a solo mission here. He's trying to special force his way into the back line, be a spy, and see if he can sneak in without BLG noticing. Never heard of the agent 012, but I'll give him a chance. He's got oh, Predator no. now available. He's yeah. as bad as he sounds. He's <laughs> spotted out. Uh, good scrying orb there from the side of BLG as he hops away. The dragon spawns. BLG stay mid. EDG like mid lane. They know what ARAM is. You want to play this game, BLG will match you. Or rather, EDG will match you at this point in the game. There's Junja. Jin Zhao gets OP here. Dragon started. But Junja is still off on this flank. And God, this it looks like <laughs> EDG might instead give up this dragon and quickly turn towards the Rift Herald. But watch BLG. They know that this is going to happen. They're setting themselves up to try and contest for this. There goes the Dragon, and BLRG are in plenty of time for this ring. And Fofo in front of this objective is level 11. This is a big Zoe that can play with the space created. Won't hit the first target. Flanks for EDG, though. Watch Gragas and Aurelia. They're on the bottom side of this fight. BLG not keen on going into the river, but it's maybe a little bit too late. Scout sets out the floors to Ed, and Rupert is secured here by EDG to flash over the wall. The Gragas caught out. <laughs> yep, 0-2-2, now the agent's name. BLG take another, even at the cost of Rift Herald. That is so much damage from Fofo right now. And unfortunately, Junjia, they're not on any of those tanky junglers anymore. And the Gragas isn't quite working out as hot as we were expecting. BLG now pushing in through this mid lane. And taking full control. Troll Bubble lands again amidst the minion wave. And as the inner turret goes down, now a 3k gold lead for BLG. A minute before this Baron spawns, heading towards four minutes for the Mountain Dragon as well. And I'm curious to these next backs because we've got big items coming through. BLG will look pretty darn good after these backs. You can imagine Infinity Edge will be completed for the Aphelios, although not quite there when it comes to the gold. We're still only 19 minutes into the game. Whereas when we look over towards EDG, you've got the double blade of the Rune King, but unfortunately that isn't really enough to cut it in these team fights. So Scout has opted to go off into this side lane and see if he can solo man it and try and pick up at least a bit of pressure for them. But because all the outer turrets are down, whereas you still got two of those outer turrets remaining for BLG, it's a lot more difficult for ADG to set up the map because BLG can hunker underneath their own turrets and push the waves back. And they have no control in river, as you can see. Fofo can walk up here, scout in a lot of trouble. That trouble bubble. Actually aimed nicely. Oh, that was blind. Almost lands. 
swear he would have had vision that was so close, but this is the problem. EDG can't push up past River because they don't have control anywhere. So EDG now looking to see if they can put pressure onto this bottom lane turret while BLG are forced to deal with mid lane wave. ADD's gonna hold strong though, as the dive could come through. How do you just running at it at this point? Yeah, show me the one on one. That's nice. Look at this, how fun is this? Uh, and he kills. <laughs> okay. He's got something that Audi does not have. Here on the Maokai Spirit Visage first, by the way. Is a nice note. With Bami Cinder gonna be turning into some fight cape soon. And there's that Rift Herald. We saw EDG lose or run again for the loss of the fight. The Felios in the top side, they're looking to trade these turrets though. Look at the combo that he has. Jinja will rip through these objectives. But with Rift Herald, this is gonna be so much quicker. I mean, look, it's gonna go down, sure. Jin Jiao there versus another push. EDG get a bit more damage, but now they back away. I don't know if they're going to be able to back away in time, although Scout has managed to escape and is gunning for the Aphelios. But the Aphelios has rightfully backed away. ADD comes in and immediately EDG back themselves just in time. Scout didn't want to walk into the lane. Okay. Turret mid. EDG at least opening the map somewhat. Now in front of Baron. BLG a poised to strike. Control throughout this top side river. Control really in this game still in the driver's seat. You're just watching how quickly Aphelios gets this turret. Uh, no real surprise for any season tennis. And now they can look towards another objective that Jinjo can take relatively quickly, which is that Baron. As he said, vision control very much there for BLG already. It's just about getting that last few remnants of vision EDG are clutching onto out of river and then looking to pick off with Fofo, starting to make plays with AD. <laughs> nice. Okay, well, control board foot down, but the ward in lane spotted that one out. But first stopping the back of Hope. And Hope, as you can see, he hasn't got his second item yet, where in comparison, Jin Jiao does. Second item almost completed for Fofo as well. Second for Scout. We've seen the Black Cleaver and the Blade of the Wrong King combination many times before. He's got it towards his second dragon. So EDG are behind in gold, but if they can find a really good flank in these fights for Scout, have the potential to butcher Jin Zhao and then the rest of BLG. Whereas BLG, if they can still set up with that front line that we're talking about, a meter and ADD, and look to, for picks oh for Fofo, they'll definitely come out on top. Faith Call used defensively. That's the key engage tool that Hope's had to burn. He hits him anyway. He hits him anyway, that's right. Fofo is not missing here. Just a classic Zoe performance right now. EDG are scared running back in this lane. And Junja is still looking for a flank. Meanwhile, they, the team might just die before then as Bofo survives. Call the Fort God doesn't hit. And Jinjiao launches his own oh, shots here. As, yep, Mako again almost dies. Has to burn his flash. BLG with that will confidently turn towards the barn. They've poked out EDG without oh, using any sort of ultimate. Mako gets sent into the lane. Fofo flashes forward because of course he does. He burns his own with Ignite. Almost kills Mako. But has he gone too far? Hope makes him run back in the lane. BLG still wants the fight while Jin Jiao is soloing the dragon. They backed away BLG because they realized the scout has started to position for that flank that we were talking about. But rightfully so, they move back, they get the objective, and now have set themselves up for that sole point. Did you see Chovy Zoe the other day? Uh, I didn't know. When I was uh, streaming, shout out to one of my viewers, sent me a clip of Chovy Zoe, where he picked up like three flashes, two heals in a fight, and went from like oh this gosh. point in brush all the way through to mid. That is disgusting. And it was just like, yeah, he, he literally killed, I can't remember who they were, he literally killed the 80 carry virus with his W passive. Like, he didn't hit anything. <laughs> oh. uh, Zoe is still, we've gone through so many nerfs of Zoe, but she still manages to be one of the most constantly the OP biggest, champions. The biggest problem I had with Zoe was that she got released right after Riot said, Oh yeah, we've decided to rework Rise because we don't like champions that are just about a stat check. Mm. Where they're either good if they deal damage or they don't. <laughs> we get the biggest Zoe. stat check <laughs> like, in what? the game. <laughs> so that makes no sense. I think the idea with Zoe was like, let's make it all about one element of her play. All about that Q. The thing is, Q is still on such a small cooldown. And you get it every two well. seconds. Yeah. The portal jump. And so far we've seen... 
pretty big Zoe's in the league. Now, Fofo, not really known for a Zoe. If anyone doesn't know Fofo, he came from J-Team last year in the LMS. But, of course, the LMS is no more. It has become the PCS with combined uh, with the LST. A lot of initials for you yeah. there to remember. But I'm going to bring us back into this game because Junja's in a flanking position. Now, Fofo on this bed, Zoe might be caught out, but Jinjiao actually first going to get run over with Call the Forge God. EDG, with no business winning this fight, have just taken two. Scout now onto ADD, forces him to flash, and Scout says, thank you, I'll go into the Baron Pit, that's where we want to go anyway. We said it was about flanks for EDG, they managed to pincer on Jinjiao, he gets caught out, and BLG now, with no Fofo and no Jinjiao. And Scout's going to find another. No Look, he found Meteor right in the, uh, in the brush. Scout's going to take him on. The ultimate use. BLG going to try and help him out while the Baron is just going to go through. ADD ults. And that's all you can do because this is their Baron. EDG. That gold lead's gone. Shinmo. Close, but nothing there. And this becomes far easier now for EDG to start to spread out the map. Scout could play down towards the bottom side. You have Audi forcing stuff on the top side and just keeping Mako, Hope and Junjia as this three-man unit to push in towards the mid and create a bit of pressure to allow Audi and Scout to take these turns. Oh. So we got an even game at 26 minutes. Now, we mentioned the flank here, but it started from the front. Now we're here. Yeah, they picked up Jinjiao. Oh. <laughs> terrible positioning. Nice. And there's the big damage dealing onto Fofo. So you can see here EDG setting up for the 1-3-1. One, one. Scout on the bottom side of the map. And this is really difficult for BLG to deal with. Fofo can't be faced up against Scout in a 1v1, he'll go down. And even to a certain extent, ADD will struggle as well because of the, the Black Lever and the Blade of the Rune King with very little armor on the mouth. But you were talking about, you know, Scout in the side lane, Blade of the Rune King, what it does. Scout now in a perfect position, channels up through the bottom wave, gets the turret and is looking for another one, while the rest of ADG are holding mid. Now for BLG right now, playing super defensive, Jinjiao and Shinmo looking to try and defend Scout on that mana as he's looking for a flank again. You see BLG realize this is the case. They can't deal with this if Jinjiao's in the bottom lane. Jinjiao needs to be careful though. That's not who you want facing off against an Aurelia. He's in a failure. Look at that overheal with Severum. He doesn't care. EDG is a four-man unit. Shinmo with a good ward to spot them out. But EDG have other things on their mind. Stopping this mountain soul that BLG were going to acquire. Mako, um... um okay, well Mako still has the ulti. Almost dies. Not sure what that was. That was silly. But EDG live on, and he's a Tarek. Yeah, eat that lettuce. <laughs> get that, you yeah, get that. Scout steals away one as well, just been like, this little one's mine. He didn't I was, even need I was it. slightly <laughs> low on mana. <laughs> but in front of Dragon, it looks like EDG, they let Audi reset, but the rest of them are sticking around, waiting for this timer to tick down. Dodging away from, from Fofo is a big part of that. Secret Agent Junjia is trying to operate once again, though. Oh, yeah. Trying to flank off on the side, looking to catch out Junjia as he moves in to set up for a scout. He's gone real deep here. He's the entire way in on the enemy jungle. He's no way to, if this fight, if someone gets caught out from ADG. They really they just need to lose. be careful. <laughs> yeah. They need to be so careful. So, Junjia, this is an ultimate mission, but how can I kitten? Where's he going? He's going to try and get behind them. They lock down scout, call the Forge God, though. As BLG want to get away from this fight, the ultimate from scout doesn't connect. Junja is still here. He hasn't shown himself just yet. Meteor flashes in with the subjugate. It's four versus five. Junja slowed down by the Maokai Kittens, and now he's there, but he did absolutely nothing. He has the flash available. Maybe the re-engage, but they're onto Audi again. Hope is very, very low. Shinmo misses the hook. Fate's called offensively. What the heck was that? Ultimate Gragas outplay. He outplayed himself. And now Shinmo lands a hook again. What the EDG have? They just used everything to escape the explosive cast defensively. BLG won the fight. They didn't do anything. EDG, what? it's Scout you need to be connected with there. It's Scout who needs to be on the flank, not Junjia. Yes, you can get the cast to send Jinjiao back. But the disruption that this Aurelia can cause in a backline is far more potent, as well as if she gets the Cosmic Radiance. So EDG, just the, the decision making is gone the wrong way. After what was a brilliant start to the game, so competitive, we just got that flash of game one EDG, didn't we? We just had to get it, apparently. 
and they give over the mountain so yeah. especially for hey ADD, big beefy Maokai, Meteor, big beefy Trundle. They'll be delighted to have all these extra stats coming in. That's 18% increased armor and magic resist alongside the shield now as well. EDG, they fumble and they instantly give the ball back Look, to BLG. Even though EDG just made that, I guess, play, <laughs> there's still 2k gold ahead. And remember, they haven't worn. So the two upgraded items on Aldi's truly, and then also the Black Cleaver upgrade. You'll see one on Hope soon. They've still got a lot more gold than BLG, but the Mountain Soul makes up for a lot of that too. So it feels like we're almost at an even point. Still that one fight to make the game at 30 minutes here. Even after only seven kills, we're escalating towards that Baron that's coming up at a minute 10. And this is a little bit more difficult for EDG to try and create pressure now. We're saying, hey, look, Scout's got this Blade of the Rune King, Sterex, Black Cleaver, well, the upgraded Black Cleaver now. Play off in a side lane. It's so easy for BLG to keep Scout in check because they're going to be looking to play towards this Baron. So they, it's by default able to stop Scout's quick push. And Audi against ADD, well, that, that split push ain't going anywhere quick. So now <laughs> BLG can keep everything in check for me. I would love to see it once again, but we're just looking at gold before. Scout 2k up on Fofo, while Jinjiao 2k up on Hope. Uh, through those individual lanes, you can see the difference here. As Baron in 30 seconds, quick item check before we get into the potential last fight, if it comes to that. Three items with upgraded on Scout versus only two still here on Fofo. They may have found Mako. The trouble bubbles are a big issue. And while he's behind on items, oh, we're doing this again. Look how deep this is. <laughs> oh, my God. Junja, you only live twice once to make <laughs> it work for EDG. Might actually be in a better position here. Oh, he's spotted. He's spotted oh, out. Oh, no. Junja, run. He's run. now by himself. BLG. They forced away the remainders of EDG, and they're so separated. He, run he pops Predator to get out. <laughs> Look, he's trying. <sighs> he's trying real hard. Shit, he's looking for it. Is he still here? <laughs> a very, very relevant question. No, he's away. He's towards Baron oh. now. He's oh. going back again, though. <laughs> I think he's up. trying again. He knows. He knows. He's going for it. He's wondering who's going to spot he, him out. I mean, there's a plenty of people here from BLG to spot out. I think the dream is dead for Junjia, although he will always live on in our memories. No, 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 no. <laughs> He'll do this again. We haven't seen that last fight. There's definitely flanking Gragas to come. He hasn't grouped up. Look, he's still away. He, he doesn't ever join EDG. He says that would be futile. But he is around the Baron for now. EDG have priority through mid. Every time he joins with EDG, he ends up eating the kitten to the face. So really, it's only just negative reinforcement to prove him. He's not team. farming anymore. He's 40 CS down of Meteor. He's just been sitting in a brush. Where is he now? Look at him. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Okay, oh, this one actually this looks one. good. This is the Jin Jiao one. Flash and get him, but Lantern's already there. This is potentially the one. Ooh, they are separated. Is. This is the one. Jin Jia, you might have made the play. Call the Forge God. BLG is owned away. It's onto Jin Jiao. Shinmo's by himself. Now finally there. Flashes over the wall. That's worth. But ADD wants to re-engage as the Dazzle doesn't connect. Fofo trying to poke them away. Jin Jia now with the rest of the team, but they have been priority. They're pushing in through mid. Need to be careful of Fofo over these walls, though. Bubble. Mako eats one. Connects. ADD's in once again onto Mako at half health. Scout takes the ultimate from Jin Jiao. It's right to the face. Scout in a bad position. Mako uses his ulti, so now it'll delay the fight as ADD goes in as well. I think EDG are getting low here. Scout has to back away. BLG healthy as all hell. Coordination completely gone. Cosmic Radiance not onto the right Ooh. members as Get was supposed to go in. Now EDG are being chased down by BLG. This is a game and a half. We got Baron priority now for BLG. And EDG might have to reset. I'm not sure what it, what happens from here. Junjia gets caught oh, no. potentially. He wants to take the long way around. But BLG can just stop this. They rip through this. Where are you going? Where Arctic Ops Grog has taken to a new level. Junja may have just thrown this one in the waters. EDG are going to run mid, while it's a five versus four, and Baron's going to be started by BLG. Junji doesn't realize this isn't the Arctic biome. He doesn't have the camouflage <laughs> there, as BLG will go towards the Baron. But it's EDG are pushing mid. They've given up. Blue they trade the tier two and trying to maybe go towards the... I don't know. They're backing away. They're yeah. not getting anything. Okay. Make the play mid. What the heck are they doing, Dacta? This must be a nightmare for you. 
they should be taking this mid lane turret. You've got Scout, you've got oh, Hope, they'll rip through it. Something. Take that. The big problem that they're having is that if they commit to a play, they'll be late on the reset for the Elder Dragon. So this is them going, okay, we're going to forego putting this extra cash injection into our pockets mm -hmm. to make sure we've got vision control in this river. Because everything from BLG, as you can see, is invested in that topside river. Now EDG can maybe look for a pick as BLG tried to move it. We see the boys on the map, but where is Bono? Junja, where is he? Down the bottom side. He doesn't join EDG. Look. It's you two <laughs> and Bono. No, EDG were exactly. And Destiny Child and Beyonce. Junja <laughs> yes. has moved off yes. his own. That's his solo better. Street. Junja is Beyonce. The rest of the Destiny's Child. That's so much better than you two. So EDG with priority here. But look, PLG just running mid. They're going to start up Elder. What's the play? What's the call? Okay, they're going to get looking for the fight. Junja is grouped enough that he could try and get in towards the back line here. Beyonce's explosive cast. They haven't spotted him out just yet. The control ward doing work. Is Shinmo looking to zone? He goes scout with a flash here. The Vanguard's dead. Junja finally comes over the wall, but Junja into Jin Zhao, rather. He goes into GA. Scout very healthy here, but they've targeted the him knuckle. with a three man knock up an elder. That's all you need. Rather, they don't even have the elder buff. ADD's left alive as EDG find a fight. Maokai will do his best. But Fofo now trying to carry it back. EDG is so low though, and Fofo's at full health. It's the reunion tour, and EDG have been successful in clearing out BOG. But Fofo, the poke is real. The damage can oh. come through as EDG will look to use this minion wave to close out the game. And they're still going. They're going, no, hey, can we do go it? For no. The base. <laughs> no go for not. the base. <laughs> they're so worried about Fofo. And over the wall, look at this. Oh, he found the trouble bubble, but. There's no QSS available. TP's coming through. Fofo's going to have to back away. Howdy. It's like, now we can do the Elder. It begins. Okay, so there's nobody here from BLG that can try and dissuade this. Well, AED is coming up. But hang on. Fofo TP. is a Zoe. No, no, no. Audi's zoning away. No, Friend no, should be fine. here. You're right. Fofo okay. has flashed. Has flash! Oh, okay, all right. I believed he flashes oh, no, away, but TPP in the middle as ADD comes through with his ulti as well. This game is so stupid. It's a one for one, rather two for one. I can't keep track, but BLG lose two and Elder on EDG. EDG have taken two fights in a row with an Elder Dragon and have him backed. They're trying to make a push forward with Junjia leading the charge for once on EDG. The, the mid inhibitor. Could be their port of call here. Yep, they're going to run it right now. 30 seconds still on the rest of BLG. Now, what can they end? Do you think they just go for the end here? EDG have not been confident to make the play. 150 on the Elder. They should have the fight, even against the Mountain Soul. EDG are going for it. There's been a few contract negotiations gone wrong, but EDG now together. Oh, the look to go. God. They found the AD carry again. Good explosive cast, and that's coordination here with the execute coming through as well. Shinmo Media trying to defend underneath the turret. Audi gets low, but it doesn't matter because Hope is dancing around. Shinmo next on the list. ADD and Fofo coming back alive. The burst is great. Maybe they can. ADD helps find one with Fofo onto Audi, but look Wait, at Hope. So He's dancing around the Nexus. He's so low, though. Fofo gets him, and now Audi comes can't finish the game. It goes on. This fiesta goes on. Fofo says no, no. ADG, get away from the base. Doesn't matter that you've got Elder Buff. Doesn't matter that you're, what are we, just 4K in the lead. Wow. EDG. If you, EDG don't focus the Nexus and they can't finish the game. If you wanted a warm up to IGRNG, I guess this is it. This is definitely it. EDG. They've got a bear nexus to play with. BLG's base is burnt to the ground, but they're still in this. There's an Elder expiring at 35. Baron should be up shortly after that. So BLG are not out of this. No. It's the no. mid inhibitor that's down, which is very easy to protect. And this was the team fight from EDG we've been looking for this whole time. Screw Junjia, it's Scout you've got to focus on. Gets on towards the Aphelios in the back line. This was the important part of EDG's entire composition and it works out perfectly there with the big knock-up coming through from the Orn as well. But BLG can defend mid. Hope. They can still push in this wave mid and look to defend towards Baron, which is, as you said, going to be up in just a few moments. Well, in about two minutes, I think it is. We'll see once that Elder buff goes away. But either way, it's still there. 
BLG can still find the fights if... I'm just going to say this, though. <laughs> the way this game has gone, EDG are going to run it right into the base and say, let's try again. It's, it's literally what they're doing. <laughs> they're doing that right now. And the problem is they need flanks. So if EDG go to run in towards the base, they don't open up the, uh, the front face for Scout, and BLG can do this front-to-back fight where Fofo can poke, and Jinjiao's got two tanks in front of him. Here we go again. Five versus five right down the Nexus line. AD starts this one off. Call the Forge God's going to come through as well. They found the back line once more. Jinjiao gets zoned away as Scout gets the ulti down. The Tarek ulti may have just won it here for EDG. Onto the back line. Junjia does it again. He really is a secret agent. EDG's tactic may have worked this time, but hope still alive until AD jumps on. Fofo's still at full health as well, but this Callista hopped way too much. A triple kill followed by a Nexus end. Shinmo can't do anything but watch. EDG will get a series win, but boy, was that messy.